welcome back to another episode of Always Open. We're so glad you've joined us today. I'm your host, Barbara Dunkelman, and today we have two wonderful guests with us, starting with Mr. Jeff Ramsey. Hello. Hey. hey, welcome to the show. I wore a serious sweater. You look good. Thank you. It goes you. with the set. I appreciate it. I, I, a lot of coordination. Yeah. Yeah. Looks good. A lot of planning. And first time Always Open guest, Emily Hatfield Ramsey. It's me. Woo! I wore an unserious sweater, <laughs> but as the people's princess to the regulation <laughs> listeners, it's a she is sloppy Joe's sweater to that, represent. We haven't the real people. Sloppy we haven't Joes. addressed it yet, but she's given herself a title. People's, the people's princess. princess. She just re- started referring to herself on the break show as that. And, I read uh, the chat, and okay. I uh, so I speak for the people when they ask the important questions. And you definitely consider yourself to be a princess. Do I you am a princess. Prefer the term princess over queen. Ooh, it just depends. I for our tattoo from our wedding, I actually got the Queen of Hearts and Jeff's. We call each other King queen and hearts. Queen, where he's yes. my king and I'm his queen, yeah. and we're working on Full House. But um, of puppies, of, of puppies, puppies. <laughs> of puppies. Of, of, all, the only children I'm gonna have have four legs and a breathing problem. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's a very specific, a very type. specific type of a uh, English bulldog. I'll yeah. have forever. Uh, but no, I'm fine with either one. Uh, I don't know. Name nicknames don't bother me, like darling or sweetheart. Like I don't get. I don't. I personally don't feel like offended even when someone's like that. But people's princess. People's princess is how I feel that I am to the regulation prince to the regulation listeners. Of course, of course. I call her turd. Yeah. Mostly. That's what Alexa calls my light. Like when we say like Alexa, turn off Jeff's light, and then he'll say Alexa, turn off turd light, turd and then light. my <laughs> then my light goes off. Yeah. So I don't have a problem with names. I mean, a lot. I mean, I'm sure I've been called like dumb bitch and all that stuff. Can we guys on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah of sure, course, fine. absolutely. Right, so I, I'm sure like there's a... been lots of other names that I've been called that I don't appreciate, but yeah. you know, princess is not one of them. Oh no, princess is fine, especially the people's princess. Yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> so turd is an actual nickname, like a term of en- turd of endearment. Turd yeah, well, of, she's, oh, that's good. she's that's a good. she's a turd a lot. I'm. A sweet one. In the most lovely way possible. Right? Like yes. anytime I go to the bathroom, she kicks the door open. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's getting old. No, but it will never end. You will never know peace. <laughs> yeah. You will never. Anytime <laughs> I'm in a room, he turns the light off. Yeah. So. I'm never going to stop. <laughs> For the rest of your life, I'm going to turn off the light every time I see you in a room. Yeah. Our yeah. bathroom door, uh, there's not really a lock on it because it's just like a little like toilet closet thing. And okay. so when I walk by, I just push it open and it hits his leg and he's like, oh, stop. But then while I'm getting ready, he just bop, 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 all the lights off. See, I think that's more inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah, that's more <laughs> of like, oh, God. <laughs> See, the bathroom stuff, like that's the one, I think, boundary me and Trevor have with each other mm-hmm. is like, if we're going any type of bathroom, doors closed, we're not looking in yeah. like that. That but, sounds like a healthy boundary. But if you that's, guys- I mean, like when he, he only has a door closed like when he's pooping and I I'm he doesn't like it. So I continue doing it. He's fine. But but it really is. The door opens about this much before it hits his knee. And he goes, stop. Stop. Slams into my knee. Yeah. Oh, God. I can hear that through the door. (laughs) (laughs) That is (laughs) because where I get ready is right on the other side of the wall. (laughs) So, <laughs> it is just like mayhem in there. And I go, are you okay? And he's are like, what? Okay? There, that wasn't anything. I was watching something on my phone. Leave me alone. Do you have to blast your TikTok super loud yeah. so you don't hear anything? <laughs> but well, it is like a shotgun goes off in there. And it's just like, I have a disease. my hair like, whoa. I have wow. to take Miralax. It cleans me out every day. Yes, and I'm very. I yes, I ask every day. Like, did you take your poop juice? Did you? Because I need you. I need that little butthole to be safe and sound forever. Yeah, I mean, colon issues are a serious thing these days with yeah. people. Diverticulitis. What's the survivor. deal with colons? <laughs> What's the deal? Have you had a colonoscopy before? Oh yeah, a couple times. <laughs> really? Oh yeah, get them I, all the time. I have to one. because of my uh, butt disease. Yeah, <laughs> because of my uh, yeah. Is it actually a butt disease? Yeah, it's diverticulitis. Well, diverticulosis is the disease. Diverticulitis mm. is when it becomes inflamed. Oh. Tomato, tomato, am I right? So yeah. Is it just like you have trouble pooping or like you don't no. fully clear so out? So what happens with diverticulosis is you develop these goose eggs on your colon lining and then food <laughs> can get trapped in there and oh then it God. agitates and there's no way to pull it out. It's really because it's like in a little pocket. 
Mm-hmm. And, and they're so, not like think of like a goose egg on a bike tire if you like if you like inflate a tire improperly. Yeah. That's like whoop. And then like so like seeds, like tomato seeds or something get in there. And then the rest of the poop just goes through and you're good. But then it starts to agitate and then it creates like a cramping in your stomach Ooh. that makes you wish you were dead. And then you can't stand up anymore. And then you need morphine. And then if you don't get it fixed, you'll your uh, colon will rupture and you'll die. You can get septic. like septic, yeah. And then, and I, I did know not some. Know I, that you you and I that. both know somebody that happened to, and they were very sick for it mm-hmm. for a very long time. I'll Do tell you, you off camera. Okay, okay. Yeah. Long Damn. time ago, yeah. But yeah, he has to drink Miralax every single night. If he misses one like drink of it, That's he'll bad. the next morning he is cramping and stuff. I mean, it sounds like period cramps, but like, yeah, it is bad. That could it, kill you it, though. It, it, yeah, I don't know. It is like it gets bad, and it is when it when it does get bad, which you've gotten really good with your Miralax. So it hasn't gotten like bad bad yeah, I don't die. um that it is a type of thing where we have to be like do you have a fever or something like that because once the fever comes in it's we go to the hospital but yeah we haven't had that thank god but that's because you take such good care of yourself is that something that just lasts forever mm-hmm. yeah like it, you can't get it it happens to most people eventually in their 70s oh i just uh i figured why wait i did it at 32 <laughs> Get ahead of it. Yeah. Yeah. You had that I, at 32? 32, I think, is when I got it. Yeah. Oh, I talked to I, I, my doctor. He was like, well, you're definitely the youngest person I've ever treated for diverticulitis. And I was like, how old are your, most of your customers? And he goes, uh, usually uh, most people develop this in their like 75, 76, oh somewhere around there. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like you're about 40 years early. Well, hopefully that's the only thing you're that early to. Yeah. 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 It's just fun to like, you I know, don't... he's so sweet when he goes under for the colonoscopy. Like he's just mm-hmm. like, such a little angel baby when he's all loopy and then he comes out and he's very sweet and something that I'm terrified about colonoscopy I've had a colonoscopy and endoscopy done at the same time oh Um, double penetration double penetration (laughs) both ends baby just fill her up is what I was told is they give you some type of did they meet in the middle I'm sorry I can't like (laughs) they said hello did they like you're like all right we made a connection and then I think they did one at a time each end is magnetized (laughs) yeah that's how that's really what they recommend Um, but they apparently put you on some type of uh, thing where you're not under, but you're like aware, so that if Twilight, you, Twilight, Twilight. So mm-hmm. if you need to move, or if they need to like ask you to do something, you're still kind of conscious and you could do it, but you don't remember anything. I think it's like what they do with wisdom teeth and stuff. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Is it? Is that no. Twilight? They might put I, you I under know. for wisdom. I don't know teeth. Although maybe know. it's different every everywhere. But I'm just like, what did I do or say while this oh, was happening? Because yeah. I sleep talk, yeah. yeah, all the time, and say nonsense, but. You were I, sweet. You, you, we saw at the time, this was at the time of the fuckface lore where it was, where they were really deep into apples and Cosmic Crisp and everything that we saw an, a, a truck that had apples on it. And Jeff was like, apples? <laughs> and then he also, he, we, he, it was also like during COVID. So he pulled his mask over his face. Oh my it was God. Just like this. He was just, oh, uh, he's a sweetheart. When I had my spinal surgery, uh, I was nervous about that of like, when I come out, like, am I gonna say something really embarrassing yeah. or whatever? And I remember like waking up in the thing and the lady being like, giving me like ice chips or whatever in the recovery room. And I was like, I was just asking questions or whatever, but I couldn't really move much. And she was saying that sometimes people can get really agitated, like they mm. can get really mean or they can just like, especially children, they wake up kind of scared. And I was like, I couldn't imagine being agitated right now. Like I can't move, I was like, you know, I feel like in Steel Magnolias when she's like, you know, kind of having her moment and, you know, Sally Field is like, I'd love to see you try, you know, and I was like, <laughs> I just feel like that. And Lady's like, oh, I've never seen Steel Magnolias. And I, so I proceeded to explain <laughs> Steel Magnolias scene by scene to this woman. And then later I came up to my room and my mom and my friend were there and they were like, oh my God, what's on her forehead? And because I was face down for my surgery, I had this huge hot dog on my forehead from being face <laughs> from, like, down for pillow. like seven <laughs> hours, like a crease, and it was like kind of swollen. I looked like Tammy probably from Thousand Pound Sisters. But I just realized like, oh my God, I just explained steel magnolias to a woman with a hot dog on my forehead this <laughs> yeah. whole time. It's probably like one of the lower. Yeah, I was, you know. but it's just when you're like, oh my God, that's so embarrassing. There's so many embarrassing things with that surgery, but another time. I just kept asking. So Trevor was the one who came to me, uh, came with me to my colonoscopy. And he said that as I was like coming out of the twilight stuff, I just kept asking like, is everything okay? Did it go okay? Yeah. And then I would fall back asleep and be like, did everything go okay? Is that, like, <laughs> did they find anything? And then I'd fall asleep again and I'd ask him again. I think he said I asked like five or six times because I just kept kind of like coming in and out. That's so sweet. Do you have to get them again? Like is no. it like a, okay. No, it was just kind of like a 
ca- cautionary thing just oh. because I was having some issues. And they're like, let's just go ahead and get you the, the colonoscopy and do an endoscopy while we're in there. Yeah. Why not? Why not? Something I've learned, at least in my personal experience, as I age and get uh, regular colonoscopies is that they get worse and harder the older you get. Really? And the re- recovery gets worse and really? harder. Yeah. It like, took me way longer to recover from this one than the last one. Yeah. Well, you chugged all that Diet Coke that made you And I threw <laughs> up all sick. the pastrami. Oh, and I was sick for days after the... I, the, the, to me, obviously, and this is what they tell people, mm-hmm. is the prep is the worst part of it. Mm. It's drinking the stuff and shitting your brains out for you <laughs> yeah, know, 24 not, hours. That's not great either. I think that there's like, they're developing, there's like a pill you can take now that eliminates all that. You don't have to deal with that stuff anymore. Really? It's like working its way into the into the scene. What does yeah. that do? Does Maybe by the next it? time you do it, you'll be okay. I hope so, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the easy it's good to get yourself that. checked when you yeah. are having concerns. But yeah, that's a, there was a point where it was just, and you probably experienced this too, it was just... You were peeing out of your yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> Like there's oh, yeah. nothing left in there. I mean, what you're describing, what she's describing every time I poop next to her. <laughs> I take Miralax every day of my life. I haven't pooped solid in like nine years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just piss out the butt. It's yeah. just a... So always open, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's the yeah. kind of stuff we talk about. But uh, obviously, I've been wanting to have you guys on the show for a while. And what better time to do it than our finale episode so thank ah. you guys for joining us today i just made here. it in right under you the just line made thank it. you, right under the thank line. you for having us and, yeah. and i'm sorry it took us so long to get here but i'm glad that we got to be here to to help celebrate uh yeah. the, the the run of the show thank yeah. you it's, it's been a great show. it's been an honor and, and i think you guys have been such close friends of ours in our life and have always been people who have been very open and candid about things and it's just Honored to know you guys and uh, have you on the show. We well, feel much the same. Grateful Aww. to have you. And can I say, uh, as a as a Rich Teeth founder, uh, mm-hmm. thank you. When I, I was thinking about this in the bath, <laughs> it's a weird way to say it. But I was thinking about this earlier uh, in, the, in the bathroom when I was yeah. peeing earlier. Uh, <laughs> how I, I, I'm far enough down the road in the career where I like to try to like do lookbacks mm. often. And I was thinking about how, like the two, when we started Rooster Teeth in two thousand three, playing Halo, uh, making Halo cartoons, I, there's no way I could have drawn the line out to two decades later, you and I doing a a, a podcast together, uh, <laughs> talking about our poops, talking about poops. <laughs> just talking about our, like relationships and and feelings and uh, on this soundstage, and it's just like I could have never, we would have never gotten here if if I were in charge of that, and like I just I love what Rooster Teeth has become, and I love that. People like you have come in the the future generations and taken it in directions that I could have never envisioned us Thank going, you. that we would have never been able to on our own, and just creating such new and different and varied uh, forms of entertainment. And it's just been so much fun to watch, and it's Thank been so you. much fun to get to participate in on occasion. And uh, I just I really appreciate uh-huh. you for creating this show and thinking outside the box. And I'm excited to see. Uh, I know this chapter's closing, but I know it's just because another one's going to open, and I'm yeah. very excited to see what's next. Thanks, Jeff. Man, well, you know, it's, I think, a testament to y'all's leadership and just faith in us as creators and, you know, supporting us in what we want to do and, and having that kind of leadership. It's the least we could so, do. So, thank you. Um, but I do want to talk a little bit about you guys just Ooh. got married. That's true. Yay. We did. We just Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's very interesting because we get a lot of questions from people on the show about I am such and such age. I, you know, just got out of a long relationship or I've never had a serious relationship. Mm-hmm. I'm worried I'm past the point of being able to find someone. Um, and obviously, I think a lot of people think that has to happen in their teens or 20s. Right. Um, but obviously, you guys met in your 30s. Mm-hmm. Slash, yeah, he wishes he was in his 30s. Slash 40s. <laughs> Uh, and so kind of like walk me through what that was like for you guys of of finding each other and knowing like okay this is this is it this Mm -hmm. is right because I think after a long time you learn what you like you learn who you like and what you are willing to go for I definitely told Emily when we first started dating I can remember uh before she made the ultimate sacrifice of giving up the room she had in her house to get ready in the morning, to get ready in a tiny closet next to a dump room. I had a house all to uh, myself. A dump room. She uh, she had this, this spare bedroom that she just turned into like her closet and she would get ready office. every yeah, morning. Like and I would, every woman's dream. Mm-hmm. I would drop Millie off at school and then I would drive to her house and just hang out with her every morning while she got ready for work. Aww. And yeah. uh, it was a really sweet time. We did that for like over a year, I think. Mm-hmm. 
Anna, maybe closer to two years. And I remember very early on having a conversation with her about where this was going to go, could potentially go. And she makes fun of me for these conversations to this day a lot because she has the memory of an elephant, which is awesome <laughs> uh, on occasion. Uh, and uh, and I, would, I remember telling her, just so you know, I will not be getting married to you. I am not getting married ever again. You said that to her? I, yeah, I said, I'm never I getting married listen. again. <laughs> I, I'm, I, like, I, I'm all about having a life partner and moving forward and spending the rest of my life with somebody. But having, you know, I just, I'm not interested in going down that road again. That was a year and into dating, you said? That was maybe a three or four months into dating. Okay. Yeah, yeah. After and, uh, going through a divorce and everything. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And then, uh, so here we are six years later, very excited to have gotten married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was definitely a thing that I... Depending on how how candid we're getting, because I'm used to having these conversations with you, just me and you yeah, yeah. behind the chair. But um, I I knew early in, I mean, I didn't get married till I was 37, and mm -hmm. so and I remember always having that feeling or that thought when you're younger that like, well, I'm supposed to be married and have children. Like you, you know, graduate high school, you go to college, you meet your husband, you get married, you have babies. Yep. Da, 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 you know, there's yep. a, a job in there somewhere, but like, I really. Uh, focused a lot on my career early in my 20s and 30s and uh, made sure I got that settled and got myself in a way to where I was able to afford a nice house that allowed me to have a, you know, entire room that was my closet <laughs> and my getting ready room. And that was, and it had a pool. So in um, Austin too, which is Austin, like the best. Um, but I also knew that getting married was something that was important to me. Mm -hmm. Having a partner, having a marriage, uh, I knew, I, I realized it into my later 20s, early 30s that I didn't, I didn't feel the same way about having children mm. as I did about having a marriage. So I kind of knew like, okay, I'm, I'm, I would only have children with someone who was like desperately wanted children. It was like, that was their non-negotiable. I'm yeah. like, I'm fine to do that, but you're going to do just as much, if not more than me, like, because I have a job and I have all this stuff. But, um, so I was fine with like coming into a relationship with a guy with a daughter already because yeah. she's great and um you know sure puts the pressure off you a little bit yeah sometimes. and yeah. like you know she has a mom and she has that stuff and so um you know I was able to just be like another grown-up in her life and another female in her life and so I also because I knew I want to have a marriage I was like yeah sure we'll just like kind of heal some of your wounds and then like <laughs> we're gonna get married like because that's what I want um and so yeah it, it, you know we did we you say it to him in that moment or was it kind of like you you heard him say that and we're like, well, I think it was just the like, yeah, you're going through some shit right now. But like, I think that if, if he was if he were telling me that two or three years in. Yeah. Then, you know, it's like, OK, well, why don't you want to get married? What what does a marriage represent to you? And I know there's a lot of people who are like, well, my parents got divorced, so I never want to get married. Sure. And it's like, well, sure. Are or you, I've been through a divorce. Exactly. And again. so there are a lot of things where it's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not your ex-wives. Yeah. You know, I am my own person. I, we are completely different people than we were in our third, you know, he was in his thirties and I was in my twenties. And so, and even when we first started dating, like we started dating a little bit and then we took a little bit of a break. And I used that time to, I think we both really used that time to work on ourselves and you know, I did a lot of like healing stuff and uh, got my shit sorted out so that then we could come back together and be better together. And, you know, I just wanted to, yeah, I mean, I wanted to get, you didn't know it, but like we were getting married and we were <laughs> like, <laughs> it was happening. It was happening. And, you know, one of the, one of my favorite details from our wedding was the flower girl flowers was, um, Ever, Jeff has been, I made it very clear early on in our relationship, <laughs> a way that you can make me feel loved is send me flowers to work. I love having fresh flowers yeah. at work. That is something you can do from your phone, from the toilet with like 50 bucks. Like, as you're shitting your brains as out. As you're shitting your brains out, <laughs> send me flowers to work. I love to have them there. And yeah. so from every arrangement he has sent me, including the bag of Whole Foods roses that you handed me through my door on our first Valentine's Day, oh. not even through my door, through my car window. window and I go oh like still with the plastic on it um I saved those those were even part of it I saved a flower from that and I dried them and those were the flowers that I used because I was like I'm gonna use these I didn't as the flowers. know that those yeah were oh. it's a it's it, it's a significant amount too because I have sent her flowers between two and four times a month mm -hmm. every month we've been together 
That's so yeah. So oh almost every God, week so she gets flowers at work. Some of my clients Sometimes will know. I'll wait like three weeks, but <laughs> yeah. then sometimes I'll give her like flowers three days in a row. If he wanted to, he would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and like there is, there. I have said that like if he wanted to, he would a lot of times in my life. And it, sometimes it's like if he wanted to, he would eventually. But like, you know, yeah. we were definitely on different paths. And also, yeah. I'm not saying like I know there's people in different financial situations who mm-hmm. can't send flowers to their city of another yeah. multiple times a month. Of that's course. not what I'm saying. It's more oh of, yeah, no, no, no. Of course, if you're in a situation where this is something that someone is able to do for you and mm-hmm. they do it for you, well, and that you that clearly communicate of, that that yeah. is what you want. Like there are certain people that don't want flowers. There are certain sure. people that are like, oh, that's a waste of money or whatever. But that was something that was important to me and that I love. It could, you know, for somebody else's flowers could be just make me coffee every yeah. morning. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. wake me up with a cup of coffee. That. Tell me some some uh, some people just want to hear that. Oh, you look really beautiful today. You know, yeah. like it's whatever your love language is, and yeah. that was. I mean, my, I feel like mine is all of the above, but like, <laughs> but that was something that I said that I wanted, you know, yeah. and Jeff was really good about listening to that and getting me that. And then I didn't know that the flowers. But yeah, it was one of those things where, like before he even knew it. I was like, oh, we're getting married or I'm going to use these to like burn your house down. But like before we got married, <laughs> I have a I have a I recommend oh, can I, a little recommendation for Please. all uh, people in relationships. Uh, I have a notes app app or a file on my phone that's just like things that are important to Emily. And anytime she says anything that's important to her, anytime she mentions something that she wants, like as an aside or whatever, I just jot it down and keep a note of it. And so I always have it front and center. Like if ever like, oh, I need to get her a gift real fast or I want to show her that some, that uh, I, I really appreciate that thing she did for me last week. I can look and be like, oh, she mentioned two months ago that she wanted this massager for her face mm-hmm. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh it also helps you. It just helps you keep track of and rem, uh, rem, uh, and remembering to to think about your you, significant other in in that way. Do you also have like her favorite coffee order, food order from different restaurants? I have all that. I have yeah, all that memorized. That. That's yeah. that's yeah. a little hack I heard. Yeah, that's a good one too. But I I have all that memorized over over the years. Yeah. Yeah, like sometimes it is just like bringing her a coffee from Starbucks or whatever, you know. Yeah. Or like getting her Tom Yum soup. I, yeah. I like I know exactly with uh, extra like like extra with mushrooms. extra mushrooms and yeah. Oh. <laughs> Tof- yeah. Tofu in it. Yeah. Not chicken. Yeah. Sometimes I get like the chicky ickies, you know. Or sometimes mm. you're like I don't want that chicken. <laughs> so what uh, what made you change your mind? Or change yeah. your mind, but like what what kind of was there a moment? Was there kind of it was just like a period of time where you're like I'm actually I'm I'm open to this there's a I mean there's a myriad of things that made me change my mind uh she's a big part of it uh just like just like being like just like getting to a point where I could really understand and accept and embrace the fact that I was clearly head over heels in love with her Mm. you know I think like for anybody who is coming out of a long or or an important relationship no matter how it ends whether it ends amicably or or not uh I think you you there's an exhaustion Mm. to not wanting to 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 go through that process that pain to to be that vulnerable around somebody else again and I think you uh, very instinctively put up walls sure. uh, at the beginning of whatever your next thing is and I definitely after two you know I got married at 21 and then I got married again at 29 and I so I had 22 years of relationships under my belt before I met Emily and so I had developed a lot of like firewalls and, pr- and protections sure. and so it was hard for me to let those walls down it took me a little longer than uh, it probably should have uh, and then also, honestly, therapy. Mm-hmm. I spent. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been yeah. in therapy as much as three times a week for various things for the last seven years. Yep. And uh, and and my therapist did such an amazing job of helping me work through the the why I had I was putting up those firewalls mm. and understanding the reason behind it and the fears behind it and the things that I was trying to guard myself against and how all I was really doing was not opening myself up to to, to real opportunity and real joy and, and allowing myself to really embrace the beauty of this this new and burgeoning relationship and and through a lot of work it really helped me feel comfortable letting my guard down. And once I was able to on a different level, which is a slow thing, it takes mm-hmm. in any relationship, you know, yeah. especially if you're bringing in your own baggage that you're still trying to work through and you're still trying to unpack and unravel at the same time. Uh, and and it just, the but the reality is at the end of the day, you can't spend 24 hours a day around such a po- array of positivity and beauty and sunlight and not want to, 
do anything you can yeah. to express to that person how much they mean to you and how how much you want to cement that relationship in your future. You know, it became very it became very like I went from wanting to never get married again and never want to make that level of commitment to another person again because I was so scared of getting hurt and going through mm. the pain of the loss of that again to being like not being able to envision a life where she's not going to be my wife. Yeah, you know. It, it, most of it just took healing and, and, and real work with, with, with real therapists. Mm -hmm. I would always That's ask his therapist advice. where he'd be like, oh, I had therapy. And he'd, I'd be like, did your therapist tell you to leave me? <laughs> and he was like, no, actually, he said I should really quite and appreciate you and, you know, do stuff. I was like, hell yeah, I like that. That's a good therapist right there. Uh, yeah, he's a very good How therapist. How much were you paying him? <laughs> I know, right? I was like, can we have a like, couples therapy where he can just like really get to know me? Yeah. <laughs> but, I, you know, one of the things with dating uh, older and relationships um i always say that you know dating in your 30s and 40s like you don't go to baggage claim you go to oversized baggage claim oh. you go to where there's divorces car seats golf clubs all that shit Children. where you're just like all that where you're just like okay you know but when you have a partner like you know everybody comes into every relationship even if you think that you've got your shit together you always come in with some sort of baggage yeah it can be trust issues from a former relationship or just feeling neglected or feeling not heard or whatever that having a partner that you can work on those things, work on those things yourself, but then also have a safe place and person that you can work on those things with, like that we were able to talk about stuff or when one of us would put up a wall where it'd be like, uh-uh, no, 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 you're, we're, we're gonna talk about this. Yeah. And we're gonna, you know, you're gonna explain to me why I was right, but like. <laughs> when she says one of us, she just means me. <laughs> but or it'll be stuff of like, why are you, and we, we both would do this of, why are you reacting as if I am behaving like your ex, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. of like, you know, he never has done anything to make me feel a way an ex did. And but I would act as if he's going to or yeah. he, you know, like, well, I know that that's what you meant. And it's like, oh, wait, but you you didn't. And so, you know, us being able to have this level of trust and understanding and open communication and just support and well, sometimes it just takes reassurance yeah. yeah which i think a lot of people who understand that are really good at it like mm. trevor is so fantastic at, oh, with yeah. that with me because i've had previous relationships where some of my exes like made me feel a certain way yeah. about myself or like didn't give me the confidence in this or i had to be i had to like apologize mm -hmm. for things so i was worried about upsetting them they'd shut you out if you were a certain way right. yeah and trevor constantly reassures me of just like don't worry like i know what you meant by mm -hmm. this and like i'm never gonna do that to you. I'm never going to feel this way. If you act this way, like yeah. I'm not your ex yeah. or like I'm not this person. And you and Trevor together are like the sweetest, most gentle people where you're just like, just even like watching you guys He's like order at dinner of where you're like, oh, I don't know, sweetheart. Well, what do you want to get? Oh, I mean, I know you like that. And what if I get that? And then you're just like sweet. And then we're like, what the fuck are you getting? Yeah. Like, <laughs> different type, different type of uh, love. Yeah. Language. Like it's, it's always fun to see your friends like with how they are in their relationships and you know even the uh, eric and barbara like yeah. bador he is so fucking sweet to her and like so kind and nurturing and, and then we've all her. seen eric and then everybody else knows <laughs> eric and you know and then we all deal with eric <laughs> <laughs> but like it's just it's just so great to see you know and like i said i just you the two of you you know, worship and love each other. And oh, yeah. Congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. We actually just had Trevor on the last week episode to oh, really? talk about like nice. our whole engagement story, stuff oh. like that. That's we had so Jessica fantastic. Vesami on who's also engaged. A lot, of, a lot of engagements going around. I love it. Love is in the air? Love uh -huh. is in the air. But, you yeah. know, I, I, I truly, as someone who's known Jeff for quite a while. Uh, How long have we known each other? Probably like not quite 20 years, but I've known Probably you, like 18 or 19. Probably, eight, probably 18. 18, 19 years, mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. around there. Yeah. It's been a very long time. Like, I've never seen him this happy and like, but also like just happy, not even in general, but with yourself. Yeah, I would say, not to take away from our relationship, but mm -hmm. a, a lot of that is, uh, I'm the happiest I've ever been with another person in my life. And that's not to, to be derogatory to, her, to any other previous relationship I've ever had. But a lot of that, it does come from the fact that I'm happy-ish with me for the first time in my life. And a big part of that was obviously getting sober. And, yeah. and, and, just being alert enough to to recognize the things that I don't like about myself and and doing something about it, right? And so, like getting that that was a big part of like why why Emily and I had to take a break uh, was because I realized that I was not 
I thought that I was in a much different place when I started dating her than mm. I very quickly realized that I was. Yeah. And I only saw myself hurting somebody who uh, I, I had was developing really serious feelings for and realized that I had to do some work. I had to figure some shit out before I was ready to commit to somebody and not hurt them yeah. unintentionally by dealing <laughs> with my own baggage, you know? Uh, sure. And so... Um, that's a. I think that's a big part of it too. It's like, as I'm just happy. Yeah. And and and, and I, I think you I'm, can tell. I, and so thank you for saying that, and thank you for noticing it. And, and I'm definitely happy in my marriage, but I yeah. think I'm just happy because I finally feel healthy. Yeah. You know. I think you're in a great place, and as much as you had to like work on that stuff, one of the things that I worked on in that time apart, um, which just happened to line up, was I, which was something that was in a previous relationship was I let myself get treated like shit. I let myself be put to the side. I let my, I, you know, I would end up apologizing for feeling a certain way, you know, mm. and then getting that strength to be like, you know, actually fuck that. No, because before I'd be like, oh, okay, well, I'm sorry I said anything. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just so sorry. You're like, yeah. Like even when I'll see like, um, you know, relationships from way before, like, your time hop will tell you like here's a here's a picture from your phone from eight years ago and you're like a screenshot that you probably you. texted your girlfriend that was like look what this shit is and I, I'm reading it and I'm like I don't even know who I am that's responding to this other guy in a certain way that's like I'm apologizing for his bad behavior yep. you know so that's just still in the that comes with age and that also comes with work and that comes with learning to stand up for yourself and learning to stand up for like hey you're not going to treat me like that yeah. because that's not how I. I don't treat my friends that way. I don't treat myself that way. And I'm not going to be treated that way. Absolutely. And we just, you have to both be in that place to hurt, you know, hurt people, hurt people, whatever. But like, sometimes you don't intentionally mean it because it's like, they're just going through a lot. And but, I think yeah. it's also really important too, if you find yourself in a position of, I think I need to work on myself. Mm -hmm. And that means being apart for yeah. a period of time. That is, that takes a lot. That's yeah. like a really big decision. And I think it's really important that you did that. And I like, mm -hmm. I can't imagine that was an easy choice. No, but like, I, but you know, I, I don't think we, I could be here today if I hadn't. Like, I, yeah. I, I don't think I could have had a healthy relationship with Emily if I didn't have a healthy relationship with myself, with yeah. you know? And uh, I think that's the thing, you know, Maybe it's different for everybody, but I always had the idea when you when you're a kid that you work really really hard to get to a place of comfort as an adult. Yeah, and then you just enjoy the fruits of all that labor, and then life <laughs> is pretty easy. You've got it all figured out. Don't and we things wish? Just move yeah. on. And, I, and 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 then you get drunk all the time, or you uh, obscure uh, the difficulties of life with some sort of substance or uh, distraction. Yeah. And then like I, it was such a wake up call in my forties when I when I finally you know, lifted the fog of, of my addiction, uh, to realize how much work it is still, if anything, it's harder work as an adult. Yeah. And to, well, cause you're so ingrained in your behavior. You and, are. Yeah. And yeah. And you, and so it, uh, I don't know. I think once once I understood that and embraced it, and then uh, realized that it's it's just life is always going to be challenging, and there's always going to be a ton of work. And I'd better it's, the the best thing you can do is get healthy and and get on the right side of it and acknowledge it and try to stay ahead of it and find somebody that you uh, would be lucky to yeah. get to to go through those trials and tribulations. Do you guys need to you want to go over there and give some time out. alone? <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I think that's a really important thing to note too is I think some people get in relationships thinking, oh, this person will fix me. No, yeah. Or I- I'll like, be happy once I'm with someone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, I think the idea of like you have to be happy with yourself before you're happy with someone else that I think is like a bit of a gray area mm -hmm. because I think like you could work on yourself while also being in a relationship. Yeah. Um, but I do think that if you are looking for someone else to fix you or solve your problems or anything like that, other than a therapist who you work with, right? Um, I think that's putting way too much pressure on the relationship mm -hmm. and it's being really unfair to the person who is your partner. Yeah. And I think there's a difference between like someone supporting you and being there for you and like being mm -hmm. your champion versus like, I need you to fix this thing I'm going yeah. through. I, I need you to make me feel better because sometimes that person doesn't know how to do it. Sometimes you need exposure therapy in that way of mm. like figuring out like what your issues are, but then being with someone that you can be like, I'm feeling very insecure right now. And so I need you to like, I feel like you're mad at me. Like that's. Yeah. Could that's, you just talk me through yeah, like, what you're feeling right now? Yeah. I th we both, <laughs> we both are always like, are you mad at me? You know, and I do that all the time. Probably I some <laughs> deep seated stuff of, you know, of whatever, but it's like needing that reassurance and being with someone where like, you know, 
uh, where we can be like, no, I'm not mad at you. No, I love you. Or it's like, no, I just, I just breathed a little harder. So yeah. Or I'm just, sorry, I'm thinking of something else. And I just answered like in a really short manner because I was thinking of something else. Or just saying like, hey, like when, when you don't do this, it makes me feel this way. And then they can explain their side. But instead of being like, you're not making me happy, you're not fixing my problems. And, um, you know, that's, that's what's so great is that we were, we are able to grow together. Yeah. One thing I really love about Emily and that I've seen in in her growth as a person uh, since we've been together uh, is uh, you do it, I think you feel the need to do it less often now, maybe because we've broken down a lot of barriers, but you used to come to me and you would say, uh, "It's this is ups- bothering me, this thing is bothering me, and it's very, very hard for me to talk to you about it. I feel very yes. vulnerable right now. I feel very uncomfortable even bringing this uh, to mm-hmm. your attention. I don't typically communicate this way, but I, I'm going to try to be open with you about it. And it's always something that I go like, oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah. Or like, oh no, that's not what I meant. Or mm-hmm. And it's always like, I, I would almost look forward to those moments with you because I knew that that meant you were about to be vulnerable with me and I was about to reassure something. Yeah. Or it was going to, like, I knew that that moment was about to strengthen us a little bit. And I always really appreciated, because I could tell how hard it was for you early on and I yeah. could see it get easier as we, as the relationship grew as well. I have that with, um, like being a hairstylist, I'm also a therapist and know-it-all behind the chair and which so, is great by the way it's so therapeutic and stand-up comedian <laughs> and so i'll tell people like that kind of stuff of where they're i'm like well have you tried talking to them about this about you know whatever like insecurities or like, that that kind of thing but it does how and they're like no you know i'm afraid he's not going to listen or whatever and yeah. it does it by starting it out with like hey i need to talk to you about something that i'm really nervous to say it first and, of all it gets their attention and voicing those fears like yeah, oh, yeah. yeah and saying like this is this is scary for me because it also is usually sometimes when you're on the receiving end it, and a lot of times it, it comes up with like um you know what what are we like are we dating you know and i always tell people i'm like you know if you both agree to be monogamous and you're only sleeping with each other and or you would you guys not seeing each other ever again would like uh, need to heart. have a conversation, then you're together. You're dating. Yeah. There's there's something. And yeah. so um, any of those things that, yeah, you were always really great. You still are really great about when I can, I don't know, I, it's just a safe place. And yeah. there's, you never yell at me. You never belittle me. You never tell me like, oh, you're a fucking idiot for even thinking that. Like, you know, all those things that, uh, you o- know, other people, people have people, said to you. No, not necessarily, but like I'll see it in other things that would make you feel like, or you're not going to shut me out, or you're not going to, um, you know, be like, I don't have time for this, you know, like, yeah. And so just telling someone that you're being vulnerable is, I think it goes a long it way. It really does. And if they're a dick about that, then fuck them, get it, out of my life. It also, yeah. like, when she would say that, where she say this the thing she said there was like, it's really scary for me to say this, or this is really scary for me. Uh, then boy, you, that, like, you like, yeah. You snap in yes. the focus. You're like, like I am I, I, You have 100% of me right now. You yeah. know, I get that. This is important. I'm focused. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, it's one of the things I love about you. Oh. Or, 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 it's one of the things that really helped me. It really helped me become vulnerable with you because I could, you were showing me the work as you were doing it. Well, I think and, also and when someone is. Making me feel safe in the process. When someone's vulnerable with you, mm-hmm. it I think gives you space to be vulnerable with them. Yeah. Whereas if someone's really closed off, it might not you might not feel comfortable being vulnerable with them. Mm-hmm. Or, You're asking for a safe space. Yeah. And then they're usually like, yes, let me provide that for you. Let me let's have this place where we can both be that way. So I think it's great. Yeah. Unless that safe place is your toilet room. And, then <laughs> and you're just, just trying just to kick through your boundaries your all day long. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Just boom. You know, yeah, yeah Trev- like a cat. Trevor and I don't really, um, we don't fight. Mm-hmm. We have disagreements sometimes. Yeah. The, Discussions. The rare, the rare occasion of having a disagreement where sometimes it'll bottle up a little bit, but usually we're very quick to be like, hey, like you just said this to me yeah. in this way and like it made me feel really silly or like stupid, but, mm-hmm. and I know you probably didn't mean it that way. Yeah. So let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like every time we've had anything like that, we always come out stronger oh, and like sure. understanding each other more and like being more vulnerable with each other and mm-hmm. more intimate with each other and comfortable around each other. And yeah. I think it's just, it's a shame that so many people are afraid to have those discussions of like upsetting someone. And it can be stuff from your childhood where yeah. it's like you would go to a parent and then they would either shut you out, not listen, not, you know, or or, or yell at you or punish you or anything like that. So you're, you're afraid to kind of speak up. But um, no, I'm pretty good at bottling stuff up too. And then 
you know yeah <laughs> coming out and then just like, yeah, I think it everyone. just feels like you're just like don't lose <laughs> You know, and then he's like, what the fuck is happening? I'm just trying to play I'm trucks. I'm the people's yeah. princess. Yeah, like, oh, we're just really pissed. You know, but it's like, we don't ever, we don't ever fight. And if we ever fight, it's never, it's never anything really about us. Yeah. It's all, it's never anything that is totally between us. It's sometimes extra stuff like that's orbiting us. You yeah. Know? yeah. I don't know that I've ever been truly mad at you. The only time I know that. Here, you, have will, a, you have a little bit of fluff. Thank you. Um, the I know when you're pissed when you start the sentence with "I just don't appreciate," <laughs> <laughs> and it can be fucking anything. Where you're like, okay, okay. Oh, no, I don't okay. like my dad had this thing where he would like go, mm, you know, and then that's when you're like, oh shit, dad's about to yell. Like he would like you could see him like biting his tongue, you know, and just kind of like, okay, you know, yeah. and that's when you need. But like, yeah, when you say "I just don't appreciate," and then you're like, fuck. You know, but <laughs> anytime we've ever gotten into, I mean, of course, I'm always right. But like anytime we've ever gotten into an argument, it's been, it's, it's been that you were at a 10 because of something else. And then a, I, I might do a little thing or you might take something a little differently because you're already, you know, like if I get stressed out. At a out heightened with, sense of yeah. Yeah. frustration yeah. Or, yeah. or stress or, yeah. Exactly. And like the same with like, you know, when we we're wedding planning and stuff of like, where I was Which at such super a, stressful. Yeah. Well, you, and you with, were at a 10 for a year. I was at 10 for a year. <laughs> and like, and with, while also like having a business and having work and having all this and feeling like, um, you know, anything that then you can snap at a little thing towards your partner, that isn't a big deal, you know? And I think, uh, like I said, it was at night that I started crying and you were playing trucks with Bernie and Antonio or Burn Dog. <laughs> Wait, and actually playing this, trucks? Yeah, they were playing. Well, like, <laughs> That's what we call this video game we play called oh, Snow Runner. Okay. It's, I would it's just like, imagine you guys just in just, the back No, it's like I a mean, game where you, yes. you take <laughs> trucks and you like deliver logs across like the wilderness in Russia okay. or wherever. It's it's consumed our lives. So we, like truck yeah. simulator we play like, yes. We've played on the Let's Play channel now too. It's oh, like, cool. It's, yeah, it's a whole so thing. So that's what he plays with his like, not like our very close friends, uh, Burn Dog and Antonio. The not my non RT friends. And uh, yeah. so it was something Different where yes. I just was feeling fussy. And I, you know, and I think, I think the thing I said to you was like, I'm not your fucking producer. Like, I can't just do everything. Oh. And then he was like, went and was like, uh, guys, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> then, Code for it. Yeah. And then whenever we were talking to them, Antonio was like, yep, it's getting close to the wedding. I think they got in a fight. <laughs> but it's like, again, not even really yeah. a fight. It's more of just like, I'm and, expressing. Yes. I, and, I just could have been a little, I could have been more helpful in the moment. I think it was, I yeah, it was stuff where I was like. Giving you a little bit more attention. Did you see that email? Yeah. You know, and he go, oh, uh, let me see. And I'm like, you know, yeah. but he also has 8,000 other things. And, but it, he was very sweet and nurturing. And I, sometimes you, I'm also pretty good at like, I'll say stuff and I'm like, well, I don't like mean it like that. <laughs> Even yeah. though that's exactly what I said, but I didn't mean it like that. And so. You know, he's like, okay, I will be better about stuff. I'm like, you are good about stuff. Well, I think it's like <laughs> you're expressing a thing. And, yeah. and I think it it's, it's just, it says a lot when that person could be like, I'm hearing what yes. you're saying. I am acknowledging your feelings mm -hmm. and I'm going to work to be better about this thing that clearly is important to you yes. or bothers you. Because people can't read minds. And yeah. I think that's like how a lot of issues in relationships begin mm -hmm. is people expect the other person to be able to read their mind. And I'm not good at asking for help. In the military, we, we, it was called heard, understood, acknowledged. Oh, I like that. No, like 10-4 or copy or anything cool. like that. What I say. was going to cool. say, I was trying to spell it out in my head of like H-I, wait, heard? H-U-A. Oh, heard, understood, acknowledged. That's why you ever say like, whoa, drill sergeant, or like you know, people say that, they're saying heard, understood, acknowledged. What is hoorah? Hoor same thing. It's another, I like, thought hoorah very, was uh, like, hoorah. Like, yeah, same kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, Hooray. they're they're used interchangeably. Yeah, it's also just like a got it, yeah. hoorah. Yep. Yeah. Like, so yeah. basically, we're perfect and everything's great in our relationship. We perfect. Don't have any problems ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we could get to. <laughs> He's fine. He's fine. Don't ask him too many questions. We'll get to one <laughs> of our audience questions. Sorry, we just been blabbing. No, just... I mean I also was like totally prepared to just shoot the shit with y'all. I, I think it's that we haven't hung out outside of. I know here that we're just like and then and then. <laughs> and I could do it all day. Uh, um, let's do let's do this one. Okay. Okay, so this says, I, 27-year-old female, have been in a relationship with my partner, 40-year-old male, for a few years now. We currently live in separate homes, but we've been together for some time, so I feel like it's time to take the next step and consider moving in together. To me, it feels like our relationship progress has become stagnant. 
When we first started dating, I told him I didn't want to live in his home because it's his and he had bought it with the intention of his ex living there with him so it wouldn't feel like my home. I've been to a lot of therapy since that comment and I have later found out that I said that because of my own insecurities and fears regarding commitment, which I have explained to my partner. I have reconsidered and discovered that it doesn't matter where we live, just that I want to have that companionship. Whenever I bring up the living situation, it feels like he holds my early comment over my head. He's never been one to open up about his feelings, so I'm not sure if he really isn't ready for this next step or if he feels like we should find our own place together later in life. I guess I'm not sure how to broach this conversation. Is it best to let him make up his mind and allow him to approach me, or is this something I should occasionally bring up to figure out his feelings on the subject? I don't want to push him into something he truly doesn't want, but I feel like I should know his intentions with our future living situation. For context, we often have conversations about what our dream home would look like and where it would be, which isn't where we currently live. Every time we have one of those conversations, I could tell he seems excited about the idea we only see each other about two to four times a week, depending on our schedules. Maybe it's just the social expectations getting in my head, but I feel like at this point in our relationship, we should be seeing each other more. Any advice you could give would be appreciated. I have so many thoughts. I have a, I have a couple of follow-ups. The first uh, thing that jumps to mind is um, good good job on working through and getting over that because if yeah. he never lived in this house with that woman, I think that we can, that's or, or partner, I don't know that there was a woman that, that, with his other partner. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I think you... It, we shouldn't penalize him, yeah. you know, especially with how high interest rates are right now. <laughs> like he, it's going to be really Dude. hard for this person to find another house right now. It's not a good time. It's a lot. Uh, we all have to sacrifice. But uh, if you can get over, and I'm speaking to the 27 year old, if you can get over your issues with living in a house that he bought with under the guise that he would live in it with someone else, he should be able to get over the issue that he should be able to get over the fact that you had an issue. Yes. Like it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a hell of a lot easier for him to get over that than it was for you to get over your actual issue. And if he's holding your feet to that fire, I mean, maybe he's just being pedantic. Maybe he's being playful. Maybe it's like a tete a tete type thing. a little petty. Maybe, maybe it's petty. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's, uh, who knows, you know? Um, but, uh, he shouldn't, be hung up on that. That's a that's a weird thing yeah. to to have an issue with, or to make into an issue. Yeah, you you're looking for a problem at that point. Yeah, like I would understand it if it was like this was the home that you shared with someone else and this and that, like wanting that. But like, no, I don't. I is that the only issue? There's you know, I mean, there's, that's the thing. It's like these questions are we even cut them down a little bit right. for the show, but there's so much context you need to yeah. be able to get. So proper. they said that she said or. She or they? I'm sorry, I just want to make sure. I think she, she it's said a she, she and a he. Yeah. Okay. She. Yeah, female and male. And they've been together for a few years. Yes, few years now, currently live in separate homes. Okay. I feel like after a few years, you should you should be able to read that email to him. And maybe you started out with like, hey, I'm being really vulnerable right now and this is really scary for me and I'm nervous about this. But if he is, you know, he, I understand like, you know, people can sometimes mature at different rates, mm -hmm. but- at 40, he should be able to uh, have a conversation and I understand that he might be like, I don't know what I want, but yeah, if he's holding that one comment that you made about being a little unsure or insecure about that as the reason why he doesn't want to live with you or take a next step in your relationship, then you need to think about if you want if you want to take that next step Or maybe he's just looking for an excuse. Right. Because he doesn't want to. Or yeah. maybe he's just a dumb guy and it needs to <laughs> be spelled so out yeah. to him. And like you, we, we can't discount just how kind of dumb we tend to mm -hmm. be and just focused on the thing in front of us and not aware of all the, you know, uh, yeah. uh, things that are going on in the periphery. Um, but if he's 40 and you're 27 and you're, you're, you're dreaming, you're, you're, fantasizing about a dream home someday that's in a different location, mm -hmm. right? I think a, a way to put it, I think what Emily said is, is great. That just read them the email. Say like, that you mean so much to me. Yeah. Uh -huh. And you mean, like, you're so important to me that I am struggling with this. I don't know how to present it to you. I'm looking for advice because I care so much about you. And 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 uh, clearly, I want you to know that you matter to me. Mm -hmm. And if that's a warning sign to somebody you're in a relationship with, mm -hmm. that should be a warning sign to you. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, just to be frank, like it, it. But you're gonna have way bigger conversations as your relationship goes on. That's more than like, hey, where are we going? Like yeah. in this relationship, and I really love you, and I want to spend more time with you. Like, 
can we figure out a way to live together? Like, yeah. You know, or even like, you know, you and I are Joe, you know, we, we love to daydream about living in the, the fantasy house in Lake Tahoe or wherever it is that you want to get mm -hmm. and say, like, I, I want to get there with you. Like, I, I love that idea. I daydream. I fall asleep every night after we talk about how much fun it would be to go skiing or sl 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 like snowmobiling or whatever. And we could live in the house that Jeremy Renner got run over in or whatever. <laughs> you know, like what, whatever Jesus. weird thing. Very specific. Let's let's start like let's get there. Yeah. How do, we, what do we have to yeah. do to get there? What's step one? Maybe step one is I move in with you and then we consolidate on rent and the money that I was spending, we can put into a fund to start working towards buying that house or, yeah. or getting th that dream. Start like, I would approach it from that angle. That's just how my brain works too. But to be like, you know, I want to end up at Z. So what do we got? What's C through, you know, uh, Y that mm, we need to yeah. figure out so that we can get there together? And I think when you approach it, situations like that, it, it feels more like an opportunity than an obligation. I wonder too, are you nervous to have this conversation because you're nervous of what the answer is gonna be? That's, mm. yeah, very Are you point. scared to bring it up because you're like, well, I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna freak him out, like, which right. is super annoying, you know, like, you which I did afraid, for yeah. years. And, you know, again, that's where the trust and growing up and being like, this is what I want. This is, I mean, one of our very, you know, make it about me again. But um, whenever we very first started dating, Jeff asked, like, what do you look? It was something where I was like, oh, you're just out of a divorce. Like, yeah, you need to go fuck a bunch of dumb girls. Like, that's not <laughs> what I'm looking for. Like, have fun, you know. And but, you know, he asked me, like, well, what are you looking for? And usually, you know, you would be like, oh, I don't know, just something like casual and whatever. But I was like, no, you know, I want a partner. I want someone that I have a life with. Someone that asked me how my day was. Someone yeah. that gives a shit. And some, you know, like, like just really being vulnerable and honest that you know if you feel like you can't be that with this person um or like i said you're scared of his answer being like i don't want to live with you because Bit i don't want to continue then yeah you're 27 like get out there you still have so much more time <laughs> yeah and i think it is just being upfront with someone yeah. because again sometimes people just can't read your mind right and maybe you had that conversation in a loose manner at some point and made that comment mm -hmm. and it kind of like stuck out in that way but just being upfront of just yeah. like, hey, I do feel a little stagnant in this and I would like to take the next step with you mm -hmm. and feel closer to you and, and live together because I feel like that's something that. I really want. And, you know, it would be really sad to find out that your partner doesn't want those things with you. But don't you want to find out sooner than later if right. that's mm -hmm. the answer? Right. Because. Well, that happened to me in, in an earlier relationship where I Trevor's the first person I've ever lived with. Mm -hmm. I've never lived with anyone else I dated. And a previous relationship, we had been dating already for like a year, year and a half. And I was like, I'm just curious, like we haven't really talked about living together and I'm not in like a rush. It doesn't have to be today. It doesn't have to be in a year. It doesn't have to be in five years. But do you ever like see us living together? Mm -hmm. And he said, I don't know. Ooh. And that was like, that's a, like yeah. an answer essentially. I will yeah. remember that for the rest of my life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then we dated for another year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think like sometimes it's just flat out. You have to be upfront mm -hmm. about your feelings and what's important to you and being direct. Yeah. Uh, and if the person cares about you and loves you, they'll talk with you about it. Yeah. And be honest about how they're feeling. Maybe they're just not ready. Maybe yeah. they're that's just like, they're too afraid to say like, I still want to live on my own for a while before we live together. But that is where I see us going yeah. eventually. Having that kind of comp, like somewhat of a compromise of like, I think that whenever I brought it up to you, it was as if you hadn't ever thought of it, really, <laughs> where I was like, live together. Yeah, where he was like, oh, oh well, I mean, I don't really, I don't know, like maybe a couple of years. And I was like, what? Like, yeah. <laughs> and it was stuff where also that I brought to the table of like, you know, it's really annoying going in between two houses of yeah. like, I don't have stuff, you know, having things in between the places or like, I do want our relationship to go to the next level and, you know, whatever. And so then, you know, we gave it some time and then even just planting that seed and then him wanting that. How long did we live apart? Three years? Oh, yeah. I moved in in uh, March of 2020. So right as wow. everything was shutting down. Like and a I week before. I yeah. remember wow. thinking like, it's fine. Jeff travels so much for work. I get plenty of alone time still because like he's always out of town for work. Whoosh. And then... Um, Stuck together. Boom, like I think I, I remember when the movers took my stuff out of my house, I was like, should they be wearing masks? Like, I feel like this thing is a thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, then we went into, you know, 
Then we were unpacking speed boxes. Pass, which you know? I think yeah. it, for a lot of relationships was kind of like a speed run. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like now you're together all the time, all going day, through every trauma, day. going through trauma, yep. going through a lot of go, going through a lot of things together and a lot of things that again weren't anything about our relationship, but needing to be there for your partner through mm-hmm. different things. Definitely a make or break for a lot of people. For sure. It either any any time I ever had like any sort of problems or frustrations where I would think like, is this pandemic related or is this like actually us and it's like oh no this is just because we're like clawing at the walls because of the pandemic you know yeah but i hope you know i think that you should just talk to them and if if you're holding back because you don't want to know the answer then yeah better than later and if not then just be vulnerable and just say also confess your love remember or maybe not remember but learn that uh this is something i learned in the last few years with your help you're the only person that knows what's best for you Mm. at the end of the day. And you have to learn to be an advocate for yourself Mm -hmm. and your own needs. And you have to, and so you're, if your partner can't intrinsically know these things, you have to communicate to them and you can't expect them. You can't judge them for failing uh, on a task or in a moment when you're not able to communicate what it is that you need yeah. from them. And so it may just be a case of miscommunication. Yeah. There is mm-hmm. always that too. Mm-hmm. And so that's something to consider. So like at the end of the day, I think just like like taking a good hard look at what it is you really want. What do you want out of this relationship? It sounds like you've got some ideas, but maybe th- take take a little bit of time to think about that and then think and then express that to them. Because they may yeah. be feeling, this, this 40 year old person may be feeling the exact same way you are, uh, but just doesn't know how to articulate it or is in a similarly uncomfortable with expressing themselves or position in you're their not life. ready. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know? So might be like, you know, well, you said you didn't want to or whatever, you know, but then you advocating for yourself. They're uh, clearly holding on to things you said years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And maybe not to be pedantic or maybe not as a, like a microaggression. It may just be something that's stuck with them. So they may have heard something else you said right. that has been stuck in the back of their head, which is like, oh, I'm not ready to move in with you yet. You don't brush your teeth enough or whatever, you know? And they're like, <laughs> oh, I've got that in the back of my head. Or they're just like, you don't like my house. You're going to, yeah, you know, whatever. They, but yeah. they could be similarly acting off of some other comment that you're not even uh, aware of. But like, also remember, like, I, you know, you, you really want to move in, but once you move in and if you're with this person forever, like you don't live alone again. Like you don't get that your own space, you know, necessarily. And so it's like, you know, once you take that leap, like that's there. And so do you really want this? And do you really want that next step and, and everything that comes with it, you Mm -hmm. know? Yeah, that's a, that is, that's a big deal too. I didn't live alone until I was in my Mm forties until uh, the first couple of years of our relationship. I'm your longest girlfriend. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, you learn a lot about yourself <laughs> living alone, especially when you've never done it before. And I, yeah. I found that to be a really invaluable time. And and uh, y- you should make sure you experience that uh, enough of that before you 100%. give it up. Because once you find the right person and you're together forever, you're together forever. Yeah, and your Which house is, is full of Christmas shit. Like great thing. Yeah, but your house is full of Christmas. And no shit. getting ready rooms anymore. No, yeah, no, I know that is <laughs> no swimming pool, no like entire bedroom <laughs> devoted to getting ready. Now I have a closet the size of this table, and it's fine. It's no, totally uh, fine. No, <laughs> no tiny micro bathrooms where the showers don't work. Yeah. It worked uh, fine. The plumbing with was no bad. hot water. You just dump. Drano down there all the time. Yeah, no like, it's deal. a rental. <laughs> it was like it was like if Money Pit had a swimming pool. Yeah, but well, that's why I didn't. That's why we didn't buy it. Although we should have. Yeah, it was yeah. offered to us at, <sighs> like right I, before the explosion. But it was like you know one of those things of uh, you know well the world. I, I currently don't have a job because the salon is closed. Jeff doesn't know if his company is going to exist tomorrow because it was right like in the middle of pandemic, April yeah. twenty twenty, and then we watched the. 2021 home prices. Oh my God. And we're like, oh my God, we could have, you know, but we didn't, also, I don't have any fucking money. What am I talking about? We also can't predict. <laughs> yeah. No, no. And that house was, we would drive by it every now and then. And uh, there were plumbers in the front yard ripping up the entire front yard oh my for God. months. And we we're like, yeah, that plumbing sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's all wonderful advice. Thank you guys for giving your input on that. Sure. Um, before we wrap up the show for good, Dun, dun, dun. Um, oh, that got me. I know. I know. I'm, I'm having such a good time. Let's just do it forever. Right? Yeah. I mean, you never know. We're putting it on hiatus for the foreseeable future, but we did bring it back once. Mm-hmm. So That's true. you never know what the future holds. But the show, we give a lot of advice. We talk a lot about you know issues that people send in. 
So if you guys had one thing you wanted to leave our audience with, one piece of life advice mm. or, you know, something that they could take to heart for the future in relationships and life and whatever it is, what do you think you would tell them? And if you don't have anything, I know that's I a lot of pressure. Please. Uh, get right with yourself. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really. Like, I, I didn't realize how much my inability to reconcile my own issues with myself was affecting my life, my success, my sobriety, and by proxy, the lives of people that were very important to me all, all around me. And uh, I, you, you'll never find true happiness or success or peace in life unless you are right here and, and, and with with yourself first and so that would be my advice to figure out how to how to learn to like and love yourself and be okay with who you are mm-hmm. that's great yeah once you which is like the hardest thing on earth to do yeah. by the way and it sucks because it's like it's, it's like, like this person it takes a lot of work like <laughs> it's like give me a piece of advice on how to make how to improve my station in life like oh okay we'll build a rocket and fly to another planet yeah. just do that you know i yeah. understand it's a very difficult thing to do but mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and even if it's like, even if you can't afford therapy and all that stuff, and sometimes just making the therapy appointment is the worst part, but there's plenty of inspirational quotes online and there's TikToks and all that shit, but like, you know, don't, um, I would say that other than that, like that one's the best one, but um, just kind of a lot of stuff we said of like, don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Mm-hmm. You will you might get hurt, you'll probably get hurt, you'll probably get your feelings hurt, but you're advocating for yourself and you're being honest and, um, you know, it doesn't, just because someone doesn't want what you want, you know, doesn't change your that you should want it, you know, that you deserve it. Yeah. If you can't, if you're not advocating for yourself, you're advocating against yourself, if only by omission. Yeah. You know, don't work against your own best interests. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. So once you know what you want, then get it, you know? Yep. Or try and then, you know, I don't know. Life's hard, but... It's okay. We all get, you know. <laughs> Life's hard, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. No worries. You know, it's yeah. fine. Don't worry. I'm fine. You know. But it's, you know, it's always evolving. It's always changing. Um, everybody's got their own shit. And, you know. There's a there's a couple things we've mentioned on the show a number of times, which we try to always reiterate. One is comparison is the thief of joy. Mm-hmm. Your, mm. your life is your life. Yeah. And trying to compare it to anyone else's story, to anyone else's journey, to anyone else's achievements um, is going to do nothing but bring you pain. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a recipe for failure. Um, yeah. And you just have to focus on yourself and being kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and then understand what you can and can't control in life as well. Oh, yeah. And try your best to worry about the things that are within your control mm-hmm. and things that are w- beyond your control. Try to let go a little bit. Um, yeah. a, a lot of your life is is determined by how you react. And I think that once... You kind of, I, I think that honestly is what has helped me find a lot of peace. Mm-hmm. Of just like, well, oh, my flight was canceled. I literally can't do anything about that other than now try to find a solution. Yeah. And not be angry about it and throw a fit. Yeah, um, that's what I'm do anything. Tiny little example, but yeah. I, in those situations, I will be nine years old for the rest of my life, I think. If my flight get, it gets canceled or I, I face one of those roadblocks, my first thought is like, how do I turn this into fun for me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, how, how do I flip this around so that I'm having an enjoyable time in this moment right yeah. now? And that's how I, that's why I invent little games and stuff mm-hmm. to, you know. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff with like, even when people are like, set boundaries, set boundaries, but you know, it you can't, like you were saying, you can't control someone. Like a boundary isn't saying like, you're not going to treat me that way. It's the when you treat me that way, I'm going to do this because you only have control over yourself. Yeah, so it's 100%. When you talk to me that way or when you say this about me, I'm either going to close my phone or I'm going to not respond anymore. Like that's the really learning the boundaries and all that for yourself is good. And um, I think one of the things that we've said of where it's like, I want a partner, not a dependent. Yeah. And that's, you know, you just want to be like, I'm your partner and, you know. We're a team. We're a team. Yeah. Like, and even sometimes you have to remind them of like, I'm on your fucking team. You know, (laughs) I'm on your side. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Well, thank you both for being here. Um, Please check out Clutch My Pearls podcast, Ah. which is a podcast that Emily does with Barbara Bedour and Vanessa. If you like smut or if you don't read smut, but you want to know what people are talking about, that's us. We're just your giggly little book club that talks about dirty, dirty books. Yes, go check it out. Wherever yeah. you get podcasts. Yes, any, okay. everywhere the podcasts are, Clutch My Pearls Pod on Instagram and TikTok and uh, all that stuff. It's it's so much fun. Fantastic. And mm-hmm. then you could check out Jeff on Fuckface. Yes. Doing all types of fun stuff with the boys. It's not if, about smut. If you want. It's a, I, you don't have to. <laughs>
<laughs> and then uh, moving forward, you could find me doing all sorts of fun stuff with the Stinky Dragon team, Tales from the Stinky Dragon, a uh, D&D podcast that we absolutely love making. It's so cute. It's so much fun. And the community that we've built around it has been so wonderful and in- inclusive and accepting and supportive. So please, if you're considering joining another fun community other than the All Good Knowers community, come over to Stinky Dragon. Or even if you have like kids, like you guys are, it's still like kids. So it's kid friendly. friendly. Teen yeah. and kid and like middle school. Like that's so, and the, I just, I love the puppets. Thank you. <laughs> Can I say something about, because I've, I've expressed this to you in, in person, but I don't know that I've ever said this on a camera. And this may, this, now that this is the end of uh, Always Open, I'm going to take uh-huh. my chance. The, th- all, <laughs> Stinky Dragon, Stinky Dragon has something that I've only felt w- during the creation of Red versus Blue and during the, the creation of Ruby. Whatever that thing is, mm-hmm. that special magic that you can, that lightning in a bottle that you can feel. Like when I walked in the room the first time when you gave me the tour, when you guys were, the were filming the puppets and I just didn't <laughs> want to leave. You know, it's got that like, I, I, I don't know. I wish it was e- easier to explain than I might be able to replicate it more and we could do it more. But like, it's got that thing that I felt when we started Red versus Blue. It's got that thing that I felt when we started Ruby. And I haven't felt, and I'm including Achievement Hunter, Let's Play, everything else we've ever made that I haven't quite felt until I saw you guys wow. making Sticky Dragon and Thank I got you. to watch the product. It's really, it really is that good and it really is that special. And I really do hope people uh, get... Uh, clearly tons of people it's the most successful thing we have going right now it's clearly people <laughs> are definitely checking it out but i hope if you if you're on the fence about it you will give it a shot because i it's it's got that intangible uh magic that uh that makes something that creates a fervor that people really love and, and creates a, a production that that ex, that is larger than the, than the sum of its parts well, thank you that yeah. means honestly like more than you know coming from you or anybody the best just a good dude i just feel like a i just feel like i just i just word salad now I just feel like it takes me three thousand words to express the but most. But they sal- all they, are like the- <laughs> Yeah, they're all like they're all, they're all good out. words. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, truly, we couldn't do anything we do without the amazing crew and cast and everybody who works here, Rashid. And I want to also thank the entire crew of Always Open for putting on the show. Ooh. Done an amazing Yay. job. Fantastic. Everyone Yay. from our set design to lighting to camera op to producing, everything, switching, everything that goes on. Um, it's a huge team that produces these shows and puts them on and, and makes us be able to do what we do. So fun. It's so, like, I know y'all can't see it, but it's fancy in here. <laughs> like, it's all, there's so much and they're always, like, plugging stuff in. Doing they all, make it nice. It's night. amazing. They do such hard work and such great work and they're so much fun to work with for everything we do. It's one of the things I like about bringing Emily to work with me or when we do the break show is it's still new enough to her that she recognizes the magic and yeah. sees it. Yeah. And she reminds me. <laughs> now, it really helps to like see her react to things and it, just, it reminds you how special it is uh-huh. yeah. that you get to be here in this room and get to do this with these people. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. It's easy to lose sight of that when you're just doing, you know, when you're when you're on the comedy treadmill yeah. as like Elise 100%. likes to say. You know? Comedy treadmill. Yeah, there's, uh, it's not just us who make these shows yeah. happen. It's a whole team of people who yeah. work their butts off mm-hmm. to bring these shows to you. And of course, our first members. Um, if you are not a first member, please consider signing up. It really supports everything we do here at Rooster Teeth and gives us the ability to make new shows and potentially bring some shows back in the future. Ooh. So check that out at uh, roosterteeth.com slash first. You could check out all the benefits of becoming a first member. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's going to be it for us on Always Open. We cannot thank you guys enough for supporting our show and everything we do. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys again. But for now, check out all the other shows we have at Rooster Teeth. We're doing a lot. Um, so we hope you'll be with us for whatever comes next. And we love you. Thank you. <laughs>